Hey guys, it's DC here and today we're going over 10 SOC Analyst interview questions. So I've been asked a lot about uh, SOC interview questions that you're going to be asked as a SOC Analyst or as an engineer on like an entry level position. So Analyst Level 1 or Engineer Level 1 or whatever they're going to call it as an entry level SOC team member. Now a SOC analyst is a role that is usually there to implement security measures and to protect systems, data and network. In an interview, the person interviewing you will ask you things like how to keep yourself up to date with different technologies, how to prevent data loss and server interruptions, as well as the usual networking questions that get thrown into cybersecurity roles all the way from entry level upwards. The following questions that I've put together are from people that I've asked on my Discord server and other people that I've talked to who have just gone for SOC team roles as well as ones that I used to ask my staff who were potentially going into that job back when I was working as a SOC team lead. Keep in mind that a lot of these questions do depend on how small or big the organization or agency is that you're going to be working for. So these questions might come up, they might not, who knows. They might also ask you some more like vendor specific questions, which I'm not including in here, but they would be things like um, explain how to do this on this particular system, like a, a checkpoint firewall or maybe Palo Alto or Juniper or Cisco, whatever. They might ask you vendor specific questions if the role is a vendor specific role. Anyway, let's kick it off with question number one. So the first question is explain in your own words what data leakage is. Now they want to, they're going to ask you these questions so that they can find out your general knowledge on, I guess, a data leak. They want to understand if you understand how data flows through networks and how it's going to potentially be leaked out. Um, things to keep in mind here are that not everything is system based. It's also a question that takes into mind things like staff training. Question number two is list out the high level steps involved in a successful data loss prevention project. Now, what I mean by high level is like your really basic stuff like complete backups daily and what sort of backup scheme you would be doing. Is it like grandfather, father, son, or is it a, a different one altogether? Is there shadow copies of things happening? You know, those sort of questions. So they just wanna understand that you understand how backups are going to work and what your steps would be to recover any of that backed up data if there was a you know a massive breach. Question number three is explain phishing and how it can be prevented. Now this is another question where you need to throw in things like you know, staff training on how phishing works would be a great way to prevent staff from accidentally clicking on phishing scams or you know stuff along those lines. That's just one example but they're going to want to go in a little bit deeper with maybe like inspection protocols perhaps. That's something I would definitely ask anyway. Just to probe that interview person's knowledge on what they understand. Question number four. Give some examples of web server vulnerabilities and how to prevent them. Now this is a, a bit more on the uh, offensive side of security, but I guess they it's because it's a SOC team job, you're going to need to protect different web apps, especially legacy ones. And legacy ones are usually the most vulnerable, which is probably something I would include in my explanation here. What you should say here is something along the lines of um, tightening up port security, so not physical ports on the wall port, but like port numbers security. Completing regular checks on that system and having external reviews come in for uh, pen testers and stuff like that so that they can report back to your team so that you can keep going on with the job. Question number five is, how can organizations like ours protect themselves from SQL injection? Now this again is another thing that's gonna be protected by firewall systems. A lot of the next gen firewalls have uh, SQL injection prevention built in, but there are other things like port protection again, um, and tightening up databases and usernames and passwords and things like that. 
So that's definitely something that you should mention, but go into a little bit more detail. Question number six is the most common question in pretty much every IT job. It goes on sysadmins, network engineers, SOC teams, you name it, it's in everyone. Explain how DNS works. I'm not going to go over how DNS works. Have a look on Google. There's plenty of explanations on there exactly what happens. But what I would mention is explain exactly each step. So imagine it's like you've typed in a trace route to Google on a computer and you're explaining each and every hop on the way out. That's sort of the explanation that I would give if I was explaining to a potential employer what DNS is and how it works. Question number seven is what is the difference between hashing and encryption? Now this is an interesting one. I've only ever come across this question once ever. And it was actually mentioned in the Discord server by someone else. And uh, I've, it's a pretty interesting question because there is a difference, of course, and it's something that um, nobody really thinks about when they're talking about encryption. They just e explain that, you know, an encryption is a, a hash or so like something like that. But you obviously need to go into more detail into these questions and explain a little bit more thoroughly the exact difference between the two. So give some examples like hashing is this sequence on this type of encryption or something like that. That's pretty much where I would go with it. Question number eight is what are some of the biggest security vulnerabilities in 2019? Now, if you keep up to date with the news, which you should if you're trying to get into a job, um, knowing what sort of breaches have happened is a very good way to learn how to protect your own environment because often the larger organizations are the ones that get hacked into and then they explain how it all happened and it's useful to know going forward so that you can potentially protect your own company's or organization's data from the same sort of attack. If you want to keep up to date with the news, you can jump on my Discord server which has a news feed which is just constantly being updated every, every minute or whenever a new news article comes out, it's in the news feed. Have a look there, it's worth having a look at. Question number nine is explain HTTPS and SSL. Now, don't just talk about SSL certificates, explain um, the sort of transportation through networks of SSL. And the same goes for HTTPS. Explain how the two work and sort of what their relationship to each other is. Last question, question number 10, explain what each of these ports are and are used for. So a couple of examples are port 80, 22, 40, uh, 443 and 53. Explain what these ports are used for. And uh, yeah, just sort of, they're not just the only ports. You're gonna have to go through a whole raft of other ones like RDP and you know the Telnet port and, and every, you're going to need to go through the whole raft of them. And they, they'll probably ask different questions like, why shouldn't I use HTTP? Or maybe why shouldn't I use uh, RDP or you know, Telnet or something? Why, why should we remove Telnet from our network environment? Explain it. Uh, go into detail of what the port number is and they're only going to want to listen to that you understand what each of the ports are and why you should or should not be using them across a, a larger network. So anyway guys, that's my top 10 interview questions for a SOC analyst or engineer. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe for more if you enjoy this content, comment below if you have any additional questions that I didn't bring up in this video that potentially could help someone else who's looking for this information. And uh, yeah, subscribe for more. I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Thanks.